Next, we need to look at how we manage something called a uniform distributed load, or more commonly, it's just referred to as a UDL. And a uniform distributed load is a load that's distributed across a length. We're going to use the example of the weight of the beam to begin with. So what we have here is we have the weight of the beam is 120 newtons per metre. That means that every one metre section of this beam weighs 120 newtons. The first thing we need to do is calculate the overall length of this beam. So the length of the beam in this case is 55 centimetres. Well, 55 centimetres is 0.55 metres. Remember that we always work in our standard international units. We've then got 220 centimetres, which is 2.20 metres. And then we've got an additional 85 centimetres, which is 0.85 metres. Therefore, the total length of the beam is 3.6 metres. So we've already said that each 1 metre section of this beam weighs 120 newtons, but the beam is 3.6 metres long. Therefore, the total weight of this beam, because it's 3.6 metres long, is going to be the weight per metre, which is 120 newtons, times the overall length, which is 3.6 metres, giving us a total weight of this beam of 432 newtons. Now what we need to do is we need to represent that as a point load on our diagram. So let's just change colours. We've got a weight of 432 newtons. Now as you're probably aware, the weight of an object acts in the centre. So this 432 newtons is going to act in the center of the beam. And we can add on the distance from the pivot, this distance here, which is going to be half of the length, or 1.8 meters. Now once we've added the weight on that diagram, everything else is the same. So we're going to begin with our first condition. We're going to take moments about the left-hand pivot, about A, and we're going to say that the clockwise moments equals the anti-clockwise moments. And as a reminder, I'm going to put in brackets about A. So if we take each force in turn, we'll begin with the 425 Newton force. We can see that that force is trying to turn the beam in a clockwise direction. And if we take the next force along the beam, which is actually the weight, Again, we can see that the weight is trying to turn the beam in a clockwise direction. We can also see that the 870 Newton force is trying to turn the beam clockwise. And the only force that's trying to turn it anti-clockwise about our pivot is the force at the right-hand support, RB. So our clockwise moments then, taking each force in turn, we've got 425 Newtons at a distance of 55 centimetres, but we need to put that into metres, so times 0 0.55. We then have a 432 Newton force, or the weight, acting at a distance of 1.8 metres in the centre of the beam. We then have an 870 Newton force, and just take care here because it's the distance back to the support, which is 55 centimetres plus 220 centimetres, giving us 275 centimetres in metres is 2.75 metres. And all of that is going to be balanced by RB at the opposite end of the beam. Well, we've already said the beam is 3.6 metres long, so that is all going to be balanced by the anti-clockwise moment 3.6 RB. One thing to take care of is to make sure that you include every force on that beam. So you notice there that I worked from left to right. I took the first force that I came to, the second force, the third force, and then the fourth force. It's really important that you make sure you include every single force, including the weight which we added on at a later stage. So now we can simplify the left-hand side of our equation, and we get 425 times 0.55 plus 432 times 1.8 plus 870 times 2.75, and that gives us a total of 3,403.8, and our right-hand side is still 3.6 RB. 
So next we need to rearrange that to make R be the subject and our operation is to divide each side by 3.6. So if we divide each side of that equation by 3.6, we'll get RB equals 3403.8 divided by 3.6, giving us a value of RB equal to 945.5 newtons. So we've found our first support. Next we can move on to our second condition, which states that the sum of the forces acting downwards equals the sum of the forces acting upwards. And once again, take care here because we actually have three forces acting downwards. We have a 425 Newton force, we have a 432 Newton force, which is the weight, and we have an 870 Newton force. And then we have two forces acting upwards. We have RA, which is what we're trying to find, and we have RB, which we've just calculated, 945.5. If we simplify our left-hand side, we get 425 plus 432 plus 870, which is 1727. So 1727 equals RA plus 945.5. Now the final step then, to get RA on its own, the operation we need to do is subtract 945.5 from each side. So we get RA equals 1727 minus 945.5, which equals 781.5. So we found RA, 781.5, and we found RB, 945.5.